Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achint. The Indian Armed Forces and the theatrization concept has been discussed for the past about two years, one and a half to two years. Of course, this is not a switch that one can just flip and the armed forces is suddenly theatrized. There's a lot of things that goes in the back end. There are two things that I want to find out. Has the concept from the initial concept changed? Or is there some development that we can see going forward? For that, I have with me Lieutenant General Anil Ahuja, who's written about this. And I have spoken to him about this. He's got some interesting insights that I think all of us must know about the armed forces of our country and where they're headed. Firstly, sir, hello and welcome to the show. Thank you, Adi. Pleasure being with you. Sir, it's a, always an honor. Uh, the, our last episode was quite a long time ago, but I remember we've discussed India-US relations and that's something which spanned out and aged pretty well as a discussion. Uh, that's my compliments to you. Sir, tell us, uh, to begin with, has the concept of theatrization in India become any different from the first concept notes that we saw coming out during the COVID time and when the announcement became more uh, uh, formal? See, Adi, if, uh, if we talk of the concept, well, we don't, we don't really have an enunciated concept. Mm -hmm. uh, you, none of us has seen a formal document coming out on integration or theatrization of the armed forces. There have been there there have been uh, certain uh, models which have periodically come out, and very recently we had the combined commanders conference and amongst the other topics that were discussed. This was also one of the significant topics of discussion. But uh, what I want to start off with is that, you know, in our context, uh, there are certain things, certain words, which we use interchangeably, colloquially, in a very, a very generic kind of sense. We talk of jointness, integration, theatrization, without really, without really making a distinction between the three. So if you really want to get serious about it, let's, let's understand this terminology. So if you look at it, uh, you know, this little distinction, it's not that you just pick up a collection of doctrine of Army, Navy, Air Force. You pick up their respective platforms, their capabilities, pull them together. Uh, and we have jointness or we have integration. No, it's not like that. In fact, this thing refers to an environment of understanding and a trust which transcends the core beliefs and, ex, uh, and assumptions that every service has. And this is can only be achieved by effective integration and employment of the capabilities of different services, their core competencies within a unified command structure. I mean, this is if I was to speak in a very generic sense, in an overarching terminology. Hmm. Now you come to jointness. In jointness, we must understand that jointness is more in spirit and then in structures. And it entails cross-service cooperation in all domains. That is, you plan together you pull in your capabilities together. You pull in your capability development efforts together. Your acquisitions are inter-service, intra-service prioritized. You carry out training together, carry out communications, your operations together, your logistics together. Now, the subtle differences in jointness, all this is done together 
while you retain your own organizational command and control structure. Army retains its own, Navy retains its own, Air Force retains its own. But all these things that I mentioned, you do them together. So that is working jointly. But in integration, what happens is you have an institutional and an organizational amalgamation of relevant constituents of all services. That is, you combine the organizational structure. And this structure should ensure that there's a representation of all the services, all the domain specialists, representations from different military and non-military domains in the headquarters. Because this has become very important today we have gone into an era of high specialization and this integration will enable you to harness the capabilities of all the service to create a comprehensive cross service domain picture and capability. Mm. So in one, we retained our structure in the second one, we integrated the structure, but overall we have transcended from the absolute service uh, turfs or service thinkings and we have gone into a little larger domain which is integrating in spirit. So this is how I have tried to draw a distinction between jointness and between integration. Now of late we brought theatrization also into it. Mm -hmm. I mean many people outside they they, they've amalgamated theatrization also into this. Now, theatrization, you should look, uh, if you look at it, now this is a term that you use, commonly used to refer to an integrated military organizational structure designed to bring all the services together under the overall command of a single commander. And this commander could be from any service, Army, Navy, Air Force and commanding all components. And this structure, besides the representatives of all services, may also have, like I had mentioned, specialists from cyber, space, special yeah. operations, organizations. And if you look at, say, the US theater command, you may have non-military specialists also advising you on foreign policy, advising you on political issues, etc., etc depending on the need of a particular thing. And this whole structure, the military command in a theater, now evolving the structure is called theatrization. So when we talk of this subject, we should make a distinct difference between the three, which I had mentioned in the beginning. That makes things very clear, sir, because you know these are these terms that keep flying around the place and for a common citizen who's just interested in knowing what's happening with our forces it is quite a uh, it's a quite a large uh, strategic outlook that he needs to understand before he actually starts foring into commenting on it sir but you know the the, One the before we sir. before we, uh, we before we go ahead because yes, you know sir. this is relevant when it comes to the context of debate in our country ideally each theater ideally should be self-contained for resources required to conduct the envisaged operations in that, uh, that sector. Hmm. And you should have complete authority, command and control over the constituents. So, uh, you know, ideally speaking, they should all be self-contained and legally under the command of one commander. I just thought I'll add this part also. That's interesting when we look at the uh, various theaters that the US has in terms of its worldwide, uh, you know, establishment, if I may. So, but uh, as, as as India is concerned, we've got right at the training level. I mean, we've got the NDA. Uh, after that, of course, people go into the AFA, IMA, INA and all that stuff. That is different. But the NDA is at the base. You've got the Defense Services Staff College, which is again, a you know, a, a multi-force sort of an organization. And the the experiences of the wars haven't been 
uh, as a lot of detractors would put it, oh, no, 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 there was no integration, there was no coordination and this and that. We've, we've done well in, in, in fighting as well. Uh, this apart from that, you also have a, a joint services wing, which is which has been there for you know decades now. So where is the problem in terms of uh, you know getting this concept going? Because there is a lot of I won't use the word integration jointness and this and that because they're too technical. I'll use the word inter services cooperation in operations. Where do we see an issue? You see, Adi, you are right. Uh, India established the Joint Services Wing at Dehradun, which was the forerunner of the National Defense Academy, way back in January 1949, so close to our independence. NDA was set up in December 1954, and it is perhaps the first tri-service military cadets academy in the world. And then you made a mention about uh, Defense Services Staff College, Wellington, where Army, Navy, Air Force together, train together. We have the National Defense College at Delhi. Again, brigadier level, a brigadier and equivalent level officer from all three services train together. And even in the respective war colleges, Army, Navy and Air Force war yeah. colleges. Now, again, you, you have... Uh, uh, you, you have uh, people attending courses in each other's war college. So there is absolutely no problem in laying the foundation of jointness, of integration. But there is one but, and that is we are unable to transcend the core beliefs and assumptions of individual service and there remains a tendency to guard the turf and the primacy of my army, my navy, my air force. Now, despite our joint training, uh, it remains. We have pro gone quite far in jointness, but then there are certain fundamental issues. It will be there, hmm. but natural. Now, Second aspect is that whatever you read, you know, the many of the articles that come, a large number of them hover around one great logic. We have 17 single services, disparate commands located at different locations, and we want to reduce them to X number, three, four, five, six, whatever, whatever comes about. Uh, we want to reduce it to a lower number. Now, to my mind, personally speaking, it's too simplistic. And I I would like to use the word, I mean, that's my personal thought, that it will be naive to think that we are just doing it to reduce from 17 to 5. <laughs> The aim is not marginal reduction of manpower or only optimizing resources, but to enhance the operational capability. Now, that should be the leading thought process that how do I enhance the operational capability? Indeed. Now, looking at the operational perspective, the basic problem in the current pattern of single service planning and functioning uh, which are detrimental to achieving operational efficiency and achieving our national security goals. Let me list out a couple of points for you. Now, one. Now, in the absence of national security strategy and national defense strategy, you, you heard about it any number of times. In the absence of this, there is service-specific interpretation of the loosely defined security strategy and defense strategy. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we've all read in all the reports that we have a Raksha Mantri's operational directive to address these issues. Now, this is subject to service-wise interpretation. And this results in perception-based compartmentalized planning of each service. That's number one. 
The next issue is this compartmentalized planning. Uh, now, in the absence of a clear directive from the CCS, Cabinet Committee on Security, leaves each service to interpret its own role, to evolve its own employment of assets according to its own doctrinal thinking. And let's respect that doctrinal thinking because it has involved with years and years of experience. But then each service evolves it according to their own doctrinal thinking. Now, no doubt there are consultations. We consult between all the three services. But they are again driven by individual service perceptions. Army mm -hmm. fields operations ought to be conducted in a particular way. Air Force feels there is another way of doing it, equally good way. And Navy, of course, there is much lesser overlap or contradiction with the other services. The third aspect is there is no single authority at the theater level or at the apex level to institutionally coordinate the inter-service plans reconciling these different perceptions and to make a plan or to make everybody speak in one language mm -hmm. that we all understand. Somebody has to reconcile it, either at theater level or at the apex level. Mm -hmm. The fourth thing that I find is there is an absence of a common national intelligence picture integrating all the inputs that we receive from the services, from the national agencies, or whether it's the technical intelligence agencies, ISRO, various other intelligence agencies. Now, that structure would enable us to have real-term sharing of intelligence. And this real-time sharing is inadequate even between the services. So this is a problem between the services today. And the fifth one is that there is absence of contingency planning of operations because there is no common visualization of escalation ladder. As you would appreciate that as we go up in the rungs, uh, you know, the operations may switch from one domain to another. It mm -hmm. may go from the continental domain to maritime domain to cyber to strategic domain. So they can all jump across the door, different verticals. Now, we have to sit down together and visualize it as a consolidated operation across different verticals. And the number of verticals has only increased. So... If we recognize these challenges, there is a need for integration to deal with the overall threat envelope by optimizing our plans and resources. And we need to respect, while doing this, we need to respect the core competency, domain specialization, uh, ability to utilize the resources of this respective service, which they know the best, let's respect it and then integrate it and also respect the culture ethos of each service because that's been built over years. So if we can, the five problems that I had highlighted, now these are the things why we need integration, not really from going from 17 to 5 and all. That's that's my view, Adi, on, on this aspect. No, indeed, sir. Uh, uh... When we look at other uh, armed forces which have theaterized, it's not that they have removed their 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 service headquarters and their service establishments. I mean, uh, we we see that in China, we see that in the US, we see that in Russia. We they they still have their command headquarters which are service based, and then they've got these combined headquarters as well. See, we have to. We have to have an integrated headquarter. Uh, I Let's say I sit as a theater commander. I should have advisors, staff, commanders 
from all the services, from all other domain specialists, and like I had mentioned earlier, from uh, the military domains, from the non-military domains, we should have all of them. The resources should be available, but these aspects of integration of plans or, or thinking about the escalation ladder uh, and having an overall overall reconciliation because there will be differences in perception yeah, yeah. but let's always respect that an army man will always have the smell of the ground better a naval person will know the ships and the submarines and the anti-submarine warfare and the maritime domain awareness much better and likewise the competency of air force respecting each that let's respect the larger objective of fulfilling national objectives in the most optimum manner with the most optimum utilization of resources to use everyone's best capability but channelized in the right direction and channelized as a matter of authority by the theater command well said sir uh, puts a lot of things in perspective as a matter of fact but can i ask you this sir, that uh, if you were to kind of do this uh, there, there's talks about this uh, space command there's talks about the rocket forces we already do have an integrated defense command which is at the island command which is at the andaman and nicobar islands of course it's 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 still being set up and this and that there's a lot which is happening there what would you do sir would you start where would you start from what would be your priorities what would you leave alone and how would you go about it see i think when we go about doing it uh we we just discuss the rationale but uh, but one first of all let's recapitulate that where is the problem i mean if we just had enough resources of everything we could have distributed it into into five theaters and given them to the theater commanders that we've got everything that we have so you take it and carry on now there are three four basic problems in this one is regarding the positive you know the paucity of overall resources basically it's the air assets the long range vectors well, what i mean by this is you know your long range missiles whether it's conventional missiles or the strategic missiles now uh, there are a large number of force multipliers so we we have very limited quantities of these available to us and because we have paucity the services are unable to shake off a sense of ownership and to allow the use of resource by or for the other service now that's one problem which i must realize before i start going doing the job that you are suggesting next is uh we have paucity we have to get more resources within limited budgets but then we don't have a coordinated intra and inter service prioritized capability development and acquisition plan mm. uh now this results in uh, meager uh, sub optimal utilization of budgets so when i get down to doing it this is another aspect that i need to look into the third problem that i have at hand today is you know tomorrow morning we want to have integrated commands but we have a very limited number of commanders and staff who have had an exposure to joint service environment or having operated in an integrated manner earlier and we have continued inability in the system because we don't have enough billets in the service or enough mm. slots at training to train them on each others domain or oh, employment on mm. uh, tri service uh, employment of uh, oh, you know to enable train commanders to employ 
enterprise service resources assets and resources. And then uh, inter service communications and integration of our networks and our systems they have to speak to each other now this problem i have to keep at the back of my mind when i start when i start taking it ahead so basically if i have to do something i look at what are the options available to me to my mind there are three options available one option is that hold on create adequate building blocks for making tri service organizations make up deficiencies of major weapons equipment like i said air assets long range vectors etc before venturing, venturing into theatrization that consolidate everything when you have enough get into theatrization now this is one way of doing it you start from a very firm footing but then it's too time consuming and it is likely to per- perpetuate status quo that oh abhi tak mere paas pura saman nahi aaya hai and which which will never be the case you will never ever have everything that you want so that is one option the second option is order it and make it happen tomorrow morning that oh 1st october 2023 you will have theater commands in place and uh, now we'll have theater commands we'll have functional commands like ad cyber space logistics whatever we decide and you evolve progressively as you go you find a way to do it i don't know how you do it you know that's another way of doing it but it's too disruptive and considering our security environment and the threats that prevail on our northern borders on our western borders we cannot afford to unbalance ourselves so the third option obviously is that we we phase this out hmm. we phase it out we have a simultaneous evolution of jointness we start bringing theatrization theater commands and functional mr commands we start creating them build upon the resources mm. and simultaneously build upon the processes that it's a simultaneous process of consolidating resources consolidating processes and progressively bringing about jointness into up and uh, Oh, enhancing it to integration. Now, this gives reasonably this gives a reasonable balance between diligence, due diligence, and speed of execution, and it does not unbalance us to that extent. So, if I was to follow it, I would perhaps do it the third way, the option three. that is go about it doing it progressively so if uh, if i was to suggest i would say take note of what is impeding it where are the problems look at the options choose the option and then go about executing it so i would perhaps go executing the option 3 that i have given a phase to phase step by step deliberate okay. in step by step go phase step by step i mean we can we 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 can we can discuss that further as yeah. we as we go now let's say we pick this how do you kind of see uh there's a there's a good old saying so that there's there's nothing more difficult than changing an army uh and when i say the army it means the armed forces there's yeah. nothing more difficult than changing a tradition in the armed force uh and this is this is a age old idiom which has been there now we are talking about a drastic change now let's say this this particular thing is chosen how do you even begin because uh the structures the 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 whole sops and 
correct me if I'm wrong, sir, the armed forces are that good because they practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. Now, when you change that practice, there's going to be a bit of a... So how do you prevent this and begin doing stuff? See, it's a... It's a fair observation to the oh, for the people who look at the armed forces from outside that uh, you know it's very difficult to change the armed forces mindset. These people are conservative, rigid, into their slots. It's 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 all fine. I'm not, but I won't say that. No, but, no, yeah, exactly. sure, I, oh, no, I'm not taking it amiss at all. Absolutely, I'm just saying whatever we've spoken so far. And whatever we are going to speak now, let's let's speak. We 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 we. I don't think we've spoken half a word on emotions. Oh, let's talk yeah, logic. Yeah. Let's let's absolutely talk logic. I have, uh, I have spoken to you. What are one, two, three, four, five problems? What is impeding? What are the three options available? Options. Hmm. Uh, you want to take 15 years? Please take option one. You want to do it tomorrow morning? Please take option two. Uh, I am saying we need to integrate. There is no question that none of us is saying let's maintain status quo. We need to integrate, but let's go diligently understanding what we are doing and why we are doing. And even now, I'm just saying, let's not talk of uh, absolutely anything to do with uh, that, uh, you know, we are emotionally stuck to it. But if we have to go about it, let's go about it phase-wise, diligently. Now, uh, let me suggest to you one way of doing it. I would first of all say, formulate a strategic guidance and promulgate a common military strategy to achieve collectively identified national political military objectives. Now, whether our national security strategy is made or it is not made, uh, well, I don't know what we can do about it, but at least we can formulate a strategic guidance and formulated this. Let's find the nature and pattern of future wars in the Indian subcontinent through scenario building exercises. That what is the kind of war that I'm likely to face tomorrow? And factoring, let's factor the realities of Indian terrain, our disputed borders, the emerging technologies that are being fielded in the armed forces and the evolving capabilities of our neighbors, what our northern and the western neighbors are getting in the continental mm. domain and what's happening in the maritime domain. So that strategic guidance, we give the political military objectives, we try and visualize how will we fight, what is the nature of multi-domain threats that we are likely to face. And within this construct, tell each service as it stands today to evolve detailed plans for a single front threat scenario and a two front threat scenario spread across different domains. And hmm. different domains, uh, what I mean is land, air, sea, cyber, space, cognitive domain, all domains. That How can it play out? And let individual service evolve the plans, detailed plans. The individual uh, plans can then be amalgamated to form integrated plans with a lead service response option. Obviously, there will be a lead service depending on where we are carrying out the operations. So let's integrate their plans and evolve an integrated option. Now. Initially, to my mind, retain the organization structure, retain the command headquarters, uh, the famously called 17 uh, disparate uh, command headquarters. But do one thing. 
today the areas overlap each other like western air command has its area of operations spreading to northern command western command and southwestern command of army so when you do this exercise of coordinating the plans align these geographic disparities so that for every geographic theater you have a land force commander you have an air force commander and wherever the Required navy comes oh you have a naval commander the aim should be that with cncs of each service with headquarters and staff of each service you make very detailed plans and then you integrate them and in doing this exercise don't fiddle with any resources don't redeploy anything don't reallot anything and having allotted this do extensive war gaming of this exercise practice practice Now, and practice hmm. practice visualize the escalation ladder that i had said it can hop from land to air to sea to cyber to strategic domain to space domain let's see how it pans out where strategy, uh, strategic forces command is required incorporate them where national security council secretary at is required incorporate them so what you do is you are refining your operational plans and maturing them from a single service to an integrated plan and based on the integrated plan evolved develop an inter and intra service prioritized capability development plan that oh we've got this this is how we are going to fight together and now let's buy this for our navy let's buy this for our air force let's buy this for our army and let's allot this much of a budget for capability development if this is the way we want to fight and then work out a plan for initial deployment of these resources cross deployment and contingency allotment if it has to be moved from one theater to another and when you have to implement all this you network all the services for seamless communication seamless battle management system networks you carry out joint training on these aspects that you have thought of you amalgamate training establishments wherever they are required amalgamate the logistics that are required and most importantly we while we look at our borders we always forget our hinterland our hinterland is huge there are lot of security concerns during operations in hinterland somebody has to look after today we have static area headquarters which look after you have to look after mobilization where the formations have to move by trains in all parts of the country in theaters it will be much less movement but these have to be thought through still yeah. and integrate the personnel of all the services consolidate your cyber command consolidate your space command etc coordinate isr grid all over integrate the resources and have communication so that real time uh, isr picture is uh, you know passed on to everybody and then cross attach officers to perform the jobs with navy perform the jobs with air force with army now do this step by step and this entire exercise should be supervised by the cds and the headquarter integrated staff that we have and then following the above process i mean this i would call it phase 1 now in this phase one when each service using its best competence has made the best plans and integrated it then perhaps what we can do is we can have two or three theater command headquarters superimposed one let's say for the northern borders one for the western borders and one maybe for northern command as it exists today and let this theater commander who could preferably be a former cnc because he would have had experience now let him see that how integrating this 
what challenges does it involve can i command the nearly 3500 kilometers of northern borders is it the optimum span of command and control and gaining the experience from this then you proceed to phase 2 in that phase you know there you can look after that you can take a decision like today the government has said that cds will have no operational role because he doesn't have an operations directorate and intelligence directorate constituted the way each service has so should he have a role should he control the operations should that headquarter be made in headquarter ids should we still have command core divisions or can we truncate this organization can we remove one of the headquarters or one of the layers and lot is being talked that the service chiefs their responsibility should only be raise train and sustain should we go in for that because you have to understand that when the war starts there is politico military guidance at every step every time situation will change people have to sit down together with the political leadership with the top military leadership to decide should we go this way what will happen if we do this way what option should we take now am i willing to delegate this to the theater commander who may be sitting geographically separated and when i build my capability should i build this capability based on the thinking that is at the apex level or at the theater level so even the americans when you read this about theaterization there is a perspective of a theater commander there is another perspective of people who sit at the helm of the affairs let's say sitting at delhi in our case sitting at washington in the case of americans they look at it their perceptions are different hmm and today when we do capability development there are there are advisors from each arm and service there are separate directorates which support the chiefs in capability development do the theaters have that now this we can only arrive at phase 2 because what is relevant is how far can i think now and what i can think now is what i said in phase 1 let's try and reach phase 1 after that let's decide that will we first integrate at the national level in phase 2 and maybe integrate at theater level in phase 3 i don't know i don't have an answer yet but this is how i would recommend we go step by step that's interesting especially the part about superimposing a theater command over the current command structure so that you could slowly kind of Uh, build in that theater command into the operations and stuff like that. So, how much time? What is the timeline? I mean, of course, I know the Americans took took donkeys years. After that, it it had to come through Congress, and they they, you know, what's needed to be kicked, and then they, then they said, okay, fine, we'll do it. The Chinese have been trying to do it since two thousand and twelve thirteen time, and yeah. uh, they say they are done. But if you read the PLA daily, they talk about. jointness integration theater commanders this that even now so there is obviously issues there as well uh how you see the integrated formations of the russians also yeah, you've seen you've that. seen that so battle wise uh, to be battle ready sir how what is the timeline see it's very is very fancy for people to speak of gold water nicholas commission yeah. but <laughs> oh the political leadership thrusted down the services because they were not reconciling they see, still don't buy it actually <laughs> see the issue is you you have to my 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 only concern is i wish we only had a base document in which all the factors that are affecting this process of integration could have been listed they could have been discussed and we could have formalized a road map 
and there will be never a perfect solution. There will be inadequacies. There will be shortcomings. But okay, identify them in advance and thereafter say, okay, I will fulfill this or live with this for five years, for X number of years. And thrusting it seems very fancy that I have been, I've been able to force something down your throat. I can say that. But uh, the fact is, we are talking of national security. We cannot afford to unbalance ourselves. And sometimes it's not the best way to integrate by unbalancing yourself. Mm. So coming to the timeline, I out of the three options that I had uh, discussed, I suggested that option three, uh, which to my mind, if adequate resources are given, I mean, the financial resources are given. And if the structures are put, they are, you know, there's a pilot project, they are war gamed. If everything is done in a reasonably systematic fashion, the most optimistic time frame I look at it is about five to seven, six to eight years. That's how I would look at it. That's not much of a time, sir. Sir, but, you know, you've got the Air Force, which obviously has uh, uh, issues with regards to its its uh, platforms, the number of platforms that it, that it has, and it's going to go even worse in the next one or two years until we do something about it. Uh, different discussion, but uh, what else are the critical issues? They, they've, they've put reservations with regards to allocating certain resources to certain areas, uh, so there are obviously issues. I mean, they're, they're, it's a huge force of uh, uh, more than a million people that are going to be changed in their outlook and stuff like that. So what do you think are the critical issues that will come out, are there, and need to be addressed? See, uh, to my mind, uh, let's say, l l let me j just pick up about... Uh, let's say four issues let me pick up four issues number one is the command and control structure that we we make theater commands we have theater commanders now who is looking at orchestrating orchestrating a war at the national level is it the theater commanders under the CDS who still has headquarter integrated defense staff, which is not organized to be an overarching operational headquarter. We don't have it yet. And the government mandate also is not for operational command. So what is the command and control structure? And very closely related to that is uh, the resources. Like I had said right in the beginning, if we had enough resources to give everything that a theater want, theater commander wants, that I'll fight my war, you give me this. So then, then it's comparatively simple that you can delegate it to the theater commander, which is not the case. So the issue of resources, the issue of command and control, the decision regarding CDS being vested with the operational role or not, then is, I had uh, touched upon the aspect of civil military, the dynamic civil military guidance or dynamic political military guidance while the operations are ongoing to the theater commander that how would they flow, how would they emanate. And the last point, what I see is the approach to capability development. Will I develop my capability for the future based on what the Northern Theater Commander says or the Western Commander says that I want it or the Maritime Theater Commander says, or as we have a we are attempting to do it today that at the apex level, 
between the service headquarters and in headquarter integrated defense staff. You have an integrated capability development plan, which takes into account the weightages to be accorded to continental domain, maritime domain, space, cyber, every domain, what percentage of resources to be given, what priority is to be given, what weapons and equipment to be acquired, because there are service chiefs advising, there are specialized, specialized directorates in each service headquarter advising, and a lot and lot of thought goes into it, and a centralized budget pool. So it's a national effort that in which direction is the nation moving? Is the nation moving towards asymmetric warfare or is it moving towards conventional warfare in continental domain, in maritime domain? Where? So we have to decide, can we allow it, allow each theater commander to go his own way? Now, these are the problems, four or five points that I have mentioned. These are the major issues that we need to really reconcile before we do this major transformation. And I reiterate, we need to integrate. Jointness is not good enough in today's multi-domain environment. But how we integrate with the limited resources that we have, with the limited budgets available to us, that we have and one luxury that we do not have is of unbalancing ourselves or giving a pause button to threats on our borders. So that's that's what I feel is the challenge for us. That's interesting, sir. Sir, so uh, you've given a very, I must say, you've given a very complete roundup of uh, pretty much any discussion that I've seen on theater commands because one to a civilian, it, it seems quite big, frivolous in the sense, not in the wrong sense frivolous, but frivolous in the sense that, yaar, kuch hona nahi chahiye, yaar. you know, bhaar ji to hai, which is a structure, usko mat odo. <laughs> you know, that's the uh, a common man's kind of uh, this thing. But at the end of it, one must also understand in the future, the battles are different, the, the multi-domain threats that we face today and the, the entire uh, gambit of threats with, with it starts from a rumor which turns into a narrative to uh, an all out, you know, uh, a comprehensive attack in terms of uh, propaganda and this and that into social media, into this. Everything is a weapon. Today. So there's just so much that needs to be done. And of course, uh, the armed forces need to be ready for that. So to close this uh, wonderful discussion, how would you kind of. Uh, what would be your advice to the CDS and the three chiefs today? Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm out of the system and they are extremely competent people. They don't really... I know they are, sir. So are you. They are... Uh, you know, what, what I would just... What I would just say is it's still... It's still not late. Let's let's try and document the whole vision document. We have gained a lot of experience in last around three years that we've been in this process. Let's put the challenges and uh, let's not look at it as the resistance of any particular service. Let's mm. accept whatever our the challenges which are put forth by the people, but then analyze them and find an answer. It may not be the most perfect answer. So make a roadmap and go about it in a diligent manner, identifying, I, I, I've tried to identify some of the specific factors that we need to address to one, two, three, four, five, ten. Let's put these boxes and, you know, if I have discussed five or 10 with you, I'm sure the professionals in service would, would have 20 points with them. So let's go about it diligently and do it in a phased manner, align it to timelines, phased timelines, 
and most importantly with the resource allocation because we cannot continue with deficiencies and inadequacies and then split it into theaters today we have systems of formations being given two tasks their primary task and their secondary task and they can be moved from western uh, western borders to the northern borders but our biggest problem is that we we have to reconcile my own perception i am convinced that this is the right army way of doing it this is the right air force way of doing it this is the right naval way of doing it but we have to go beyond that and integrate that this is the best integrated way of doing about it there has to be an authority with competence to reconcile these plans these operational plans to me that's the most important and my advice to the people looking from outside is don't get too excited over 17 versus 5 I mean, a couple of men extra. Well, yes, we should shed the flap and we should do it the fastest that we can. But if I was to ask even a layman, uh, you, you, you not been in uniform, Adi. If I was to ask you, what is more important, saving the resources of two hundred men or enhancing the operational efficiency of a nation? I, I think, even your answer would be the latter. So, so honestly, I would say please take two thousand men if it needs us. Needs, <laughs> okay. needs, you so know, let's that's... let's look at it that way. And uh, I've I've tried to uh, give the steps of doing it, and if they are related to timelines, and you know, you take the next step after you have completed it. Perhaps we would uh, we would be able to do it uh, in a more smooth manner. As I was saying, sir, I would actually say take take two, take twenty thousand, two thousand men, no problem. Because at the end of it, what is needed, and I think as as a as a citizen, what we would want is that whatever structure that the armed forces are wanting to do, it should be for the betterment of the armed forces. That's just about it. I don't think uh, as a common citizen, of course, there are there are those uh, those few who have interests and ulterior motives and this and that. I don't want to comment on those, but. <laughs> at the end of it i think you you refer to them let the guys in the chair do the job don't get too excited about the number of commands and this and that and the other and that i think is very significant the the, the whole battle of reduction uh, should not become a battle of reduction just for the heck of reducing cost but uh, a battle of efficiency rather more than reduction so even if the numbers of the forces need to remain the same but it improves the efficiency of the forces Fair enough. I think that's that's a good battle won. Uh, that's what I would take from what you've what you've mentioned and what you've told us in the past. Uh, you know, close to an hour with regards to the theaterization concept. So thank you so much. This was an eye opener. As a matter of fact, you know, there's so many doubts in our heads uh, when you talk to uh, or you read the articles that are coming out with regards. That they are one sided bias, if I may. Uh, I would go out on a limb, and please don't mind me. But I think you're one of the first persons that I've spoken to who's actually given me an understanding of how this could be achieved without disturbing the current structure, which a lot of people are afraid of. Evidently, we've got two nuclear-armed rogue neighbors, uh, and slow and steady integrating and slow and steady bringing in that particular change. I think option number three would be. Uh, quite interesting if if it does uh, come out, sir. Thank you so much, sir. It's always a pleasure. Uh, I keep reading what you write, and uh, I hope that we can have these interactions a lot many more times, so that we can, as citizens of this great nation, learn a little more. Once again, thank you, and Jai Hind, sir. Thank you, Adi. Thank you very much. Pleasure being with you. Thank you. Thank you.